got on the suit. Why are you making me look bad? <laughs> Wait a minute, man. I just threw on a jacket. I did, I... Hello, mommy. Hey, how you doing? Good. I'm on with Charles. We're about to talk to the President Obama. Say hey, Mr. Right. Ocell. Hey, how you doing? Good I'm good. You. Yeah, hey, when a president asks you to do something, you have to do it, no matter what it is. That's right. I'm going to let y'all go then. I'm just <laughs> checking in. All right. All right. Love you. Uh huh. I love y'all. Love you. All right. All right. I'm talk proud to you. Right. I love you. Shaq, you know the difference between me, you, and the president? He got all them books in the background. He's actually probably read them. I just got mine for show. Me too. <laughs> Hello, sir. So I'm 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 playing Kenny the Jet. Yes, you are. <laughs> How you guys been doing? It's going good. It's a little crazy with COVID. We got to work like an extra three months, so we ain't happy about that. Well, I know you don't want to work too hard, now. No, he does not. I'm retired. I'm not supposed to be working hard. Let me ask you a question. Has this improved your golf game, brother? No, it has I'm all, not. I'm, I'm playing great right now. I'm almost uh, back to normal. Chuck, you know it's a federal offense to lie to the president. <laughs> Shaq, how you been doing, man? All your businesses. Is there anything Shaq isn't selling right now? Nothing. He, he's and, doing and, it and all. He owns, he owns half of everything he sells, too. I've been a lucky man. I don't have as much money as the great Charles Barkley, but I'm close. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's because you don't go to Vegas as often as he does. Charles. How does it feel that the president knows that you're an avid gambler in Vegas? It's all over TV. No, Come on, I, man. I, I, I can't hide it. Chuck is Chuck, and 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 that's what we love about him. Listen, uh, I appreciate you guys doing this. You know, part of our goal here is to make sure that everybody who's been going through so much in COVID understands the need and the urgency of our communities getting vaccinated. Michelle and I, we've been lucky. Michelle's mom, she just stayed put in Chicago, didn't leave her apartment. You know, the girls, as frustrating as it was, they, you know, really followed uh, protocol in terms of making sure that they took this seriously. Now, as the vaccine becomes more available, I want to make sure that our communities, particularly ones African-American, Latino, as well as young people, understand that this will save lives and allow people to get their lives back to normal. And the, the sooner we get more people vaccinated, the better off we're going to be. Mr. President, I get my second vaccine shot tomorrow. I Go cannot ahead. wait. I think it's important for us to keep talking about the vaccine. So I'm telling all my friends, yo, man, forget what happened back in the day Every black person, uh, please go out and get vaccinated. I am vaccinated. Uh, my family has underlying conditions. They are also vaccinated. But I'm not worried about me or my family. I'm worried about the average mom and dad. First of all, a lot of the underlying conditions, things like diabetes, uh, you know, folks who, who've got pre-existing conditions, there is more of that in communities of color than there is generally, which means we're more vulnerable. Number two, a lot of young people think, well, you know what, even if I get COVID, it's going to be like a bad cold. But part of what we're seeing now is there's a different strain of the virus has come over. That's now the dominant variant, and it's actually hitting young people harder than the original version. We don't know the kinds of long-term effects that we're having. There's some folks who get it, and six months later, they're still not feeling quite right. Part of the reason to get vaccinated is because it makes everybody's safer. And it's the same reason why, by the way, you know, we don't have things like polio anymore. Measles used to kill people all the time. The reason we don't see that is because kids get vaccine before they even go to school. And the last point I'll make, you know, Chuck, you mentioned history about things like Tuskegee. The irony is when you know about the Tuskegee experiment, what was going on there was the government withheld treatment that was available for black men for syphilis. It wasn't that they made them sick by giving them medicine. It's that they didn't give them medicine they needed. And so here's a situation where if the medicine's available, we need to take it. And uh, look, if the wealthy and the powerful in our society are all lining up to get shots, that means everybody should know it's a good thing to get. Did Chuck freeze up? Yes, he did. Because I've never seen him this quiet. He's in the... No, I think I'm back. I'm, I'm back. Oh, man. I heard a rumor that uh, your daughter's getting married, so I want to congratulate you on that, uh, but that you also uh, felt like you need to get in shape because the horror, right, when you're lifted in the chair, nobody could do that. 
it, uh, at your current weight. Well, let me say this. Three weeks ago, I walked my daughter down the aisle and I survived the horror. Nobody got hurt. It was the best day of my life. Man, congratulations though, brother. And I appreciate you guys helping out on this thing. Thank you for having us. Look forward to seeing you in person.